I've needed to build an outfeed table for some time now, and a workbench for that matter. And since my shop is so small, I figured I might as well make a mobile workstation that can do both. Now the floors are so uneven in my garage that I wanted to try something a little different. Let's get started. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll have noticed that my workbench is just a pair of sawhorses with a beat up piece of plywood on top. Far from being solid or stable, the only thing I do like about this setup is that it allows me to move it closer to my table saw when I need an outfeed table, or just fold it up and remove it completely when I need floor space. With that in mind, I'm going to build a simple 2x4 mobile workbench with casters so I can move it around, and adjustable leveling feet so I can lock it in place, no matter how uneven the floors are. I used around 10 2x4s for the base, but bought some extra as you can see here. I spent some time sifting through the boards at the lumber store and picked the straightest ones possible. This is a 3D model of the workbench and what I'm doing right now is working on building these three frames. I have plans available for this build on my website and you'll find a link to those in the video's description below. Once all the pieces were cut, I clamped a board to the workbench to use as a stop so I could easily line up the ends and have something to hold the boards in place while I assembled the frame. I simply used a countersink bit to drill pilot holes and then drove in some 3 inch screws. To make things easier, I used spacer boards to position the other stretchers, that way there's no measuring, no marking, and the boards don't move around on me while I'm driving the screws. After completing the first frame, I simply repeated the process for the middle frame. Now before assembling the top frame, I'm going to make some pocket holes so I can attach the top of the workbench from underneath. If I were using plywood, I would probably just skip this step and just screw the plywood down from above, but since I'm going to use melamine, I want to avoid damaging the surface and keep it pristine. So with that done, I assemble the frame, making sure to keep all the pocket holes facing upwards. Next I'll get to work on the legs. Now two of the legs will be assembled in a corner formation for added stability, and here I'm squaring up one edge of each board just so I'll have a straight flat surface for assembly. I made a few pocket holes and applied some glue before aligning the boards and clamping them down while I drove in the pocket screws. Before assembly, I'm going to add additional blocks to the lower frame, and this will be so that the caster wheels have a big enough surface to rest on. The good thing is that I can reuse the spacer blocks I previously cut for assembly. A couple more screws and I'll be ready to start putting this workbench together. I'm a big fan of using a physical reference rather than just a reference line when I can. To install the legs, I'm using spacer blocks to raise up the lower frame to the desired height. I can then position the front corner legs and attach them, again first making countersunk pilot holes and securing them with screws. The back legs are single 2x4s that I lined up with the back edge and used a speed square to make sure it was square to the frame. With all four legs attached to the lower frame, I cut another spacer block that I could pair up with the ones I had previously used. I went around and secured the blocks with some clamps, and then could just drop the middle frame into place and secure it with some screws. After a quick inspection from Zoe, I got the green light to carry on with the build. Using the same blocks again as supports, I dropped the top frame into place. Now you'll notice this frame is wider at the back than the other levels, and now is a good time to explain this. Looking at the back of my saw, you can see all the potential obstacles here that would get in the way. I've got dust collection at the bottom of the saw, and also have this overhead dust collection hose here. Ultimately I determined that it would be best to leave extra room between the base and the back of the saw to provide clearance for all of this. So back to assembly, once I have the top nice and flush, I could secure it with some more screws, doing my best to avoid the other screws, which wasn't always obvious. Time to flip this thing over and install the casters. I'm going to inset the casters rather than put them under the legs, and I'll explain why in just a second. The only thing I should point out here is to inset them far enough so that they clear the legs. I thought of using flip down casters like the one shown here, but I've read they tend to fail over time and they're not cheap, not to mention I don't like the fact that they stick out from the workbench. Anyhow, I used some hex screws to attach the casters and as you can see here, the wheels protrude just past the legs so the bench can move around freely. While I secure the other casters, I want to show you how uneven my garage floor is. Not being level is one thing, but having odd slopes and dips like this one is a real challenge. You can see here that my wheels lose contact with the ground at times, making the bench unstable. 
That's why I'm going to add these heavy duty leveling feet so I can not only stabilize the outfeed table, but also level it so it's parallel with my table saw. For more info on these and all the materials that I used, you'll find product links in the description below. For the bottom and middle shelf, I'm using half inch MDF because it's cheaper than plywood and these really shouldn't get much abuse. I had all my panels cut down at the lumber store, leaving them slightly oversized, so I could then cut them down to their final size in the shop. This way I get a nice clean cut. For the top of the workbench, I want a smooth, slick, non-stick surface, so I'm going to try black melamine. A lot of people ask how to get a clean cut when it comes to melamine, and here you can see I'm using painter's tape to help avoid chipping. You can also lightly score the surface before fully cutting it, but by far the best way to get a clean cut is to use a sharp melamine specific blade like this one. I cut the top so it would overhang the frame on all four sides. I know I'll end up using this as a workbench and I want to have the flexibility to be able to easily clamp stuff down. After checking that the overhang was even on all sides, I used pocket screws to attach the top from underneath. Since this is quite an awkward position and hard to see, I finished driving all the screws by hand so I wouldn't overdrive them. To hide those unsightly melamine edges and offer some additional protection, I'm going to trim the edges with some poplar. A hardwood like oak or maple would be even better as poplar is relatively soft compared to those, but for some reason I really like poplar, and it's a little more affordable. I applied a generous amount of melamine glue and temporarily secured it with a few brad nails. I'll then throw on some clamps. I'll be honest here and say I'm not sure this will hold as I don't think gluing wood to particle board is the most solid, but we'll see. If it shows signs of coming undone, I'll likely add some visible through dowels or simply add some screws. As you can see here, I did one side at a time leaving the trim long and then used a flush cut saw to trim it down to length once it had dried and then repeated the process for the next side. I then sanded and rounded all the corners and also made sure to break the sharp edges as well. I'll probably add some wipe on poly to the trim eventually, but for now I can roll it into place and test it out. I finally have a spot to store my mini crosscut sled and my hexagon cutting jig, as well as my sandpaper bin with lots of room to spare for future jigs and sleds. Here's a peek at the back of the table with plenty clearance for all the hoses. If you're interested, I have plans available for this build and you'll find a link in the description below. Hey, I hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon.